Hello, welcome to Kia Nero Diaries on the 10th of November. It's a very rainy and dull day here today. Uh, say welcome back if you've watched the channel before and welcome to new subscribers, of which there have been a few lately. Now, um, just not going to talk about the uh, Enero today. Um, just going to talk about the amount of anti-EV stuff there is on YouTube. I mean, there's just a torrent of it. And there are whole channels that are dedicated to it. And uh, one of the things that these people seem to uh, push is that uh, virtually any fire that happens anywhere in the world is the cause of an EV. Um, and most noticeably, recently, there was a fire at the, um, in the car park of Luton Airport in the UK. And it destroyed uh, hundreds and hundreds of cars. And uh, there's a channel in the UK called Jeff Buys Cars. Apparently he does. Um, and uh, some of his stuff is quite interesting because he's, um, you know, I, I looked at his channel a few years ago actually, and uh, he's all about, you know, taking old cars. He's really into old Volvos and keeping them going, which is a good thing. I mean, you know, we want to get more use out of machines and devices that we build as uh, there's always a carbon footprint associated with anything that we make because it involves digging up stuff and using energy to produce it. But anyway, Jeff has really found a way, I guess, of getting a lot more clicks um, because that's what it's all about for some people on YouTube. I haven't ticked the box to um, include advertising on this channel, so you shouldn't really see any. And I mean, obviously, I don't come very high in the algorithms when people are looking at a particular subject, but that's not why... I'm doing this. I'd rather have, you know, a few hundred subscribers who are interested in serious things uh, rather than, you know, just sort of uh, clickbait type of uh, hits. But uh, dear old Jeff, he, uh, he's he got, you know, 16, 20,000 subscribers and I'm sure he does very well. But as soon as the Luton Airport fire happened, he was straight on it. And uh, he said, this is now the end of EVs. This is the nail in the coffin. Obviously, this fire was caused by an electric vehicle. Um, you know, no uh, petrol or diesel car could possibly burn like that, could it? Well, um, you know, a bit of a jump to conclusion there, Jeff. And as it turned out, uh, it wasn't an electric vehicle that caused the fire. The fire started in a Range Rover Evoque diesel registered in 2014 because it's quite interesting as they as they started to realize that uh, it, the first fire the first car to catch fire was the Range Rover people said oh it must have been a hybrid then because there's a battery and the battery sits just under the seat at the back of the car and that's where the fire started you know they were really struggling desperate to try to make it the fault of an EV but it wasn't. It was a plain old diesel. And as somebody who really knows about this stuff pointed out to me, is that all modern cars, the fuel tanks are plastic and they don't leak like the old metal ones used to. But uh, when they do go, they go big time and the fuel just spills all over the floor and it's a, and it's a fire from underneath the vehicle. And that was a very sad thing because you know a lot of people have lost their cars and probably won't get back on insurance what uh, they were hoping to get um and uh, you know jeff carried on he, he got about six videos out of that he, he really stretched out the luton airport car fire to the maximum effect i'm sure he did very well from it but basically he's wrong it wasn't an ev that started the fire um so in the same vein there was another incident uh, in Europe uh, back in the summer where a cargo ship carrying about four or five thousand cars I think it was a ship called the Fremantle Highway uh, caught fire it sadly lost to uh, led to the loss of one life and 16 other people in the crew on board the ship were injured and there had to be a, a rescue um, of people from the ship but when they eventually got the fire under control and pulled the ship into uh, port they found that on the manifest when the ship left I think it was Bremerhaven in Germany there were 498 electric vehicles in the manifest and when they got the ship back into port somewhere I think it was Rotterdam or somewhere in the Netherlands 
um, it turned out that every single one of those electric vehicles was intact. No damage at all. There was, I mean, it, these are huge ships with lots of different decks and the fire obviously started on one deck. So the, the, the investigators are still looking into how the fire did actually start, but it certainly wasn't an EV. But of course, you know, these people, they never let uh, the, the facts get in the way of a good story. And uh, another little saying is that a lie gets halfway around the world before the truth has even put its pants on. But of course, none of these uh, channels, of which there are many, Jeff is only one, who, who jump on every car fire, uh, and even when there are genuine EV fires, jump on every EV fire and say, oh, this is, you know, EVs are far too dangerous, you, you, you shouldn't even we shouldn't be going there they never even print any facts they never even actually investigate the subject which i have done to some small extent i'm not you know making any big claims here because it's really not that difficult you go onto google and you look up data on car fires generally and there's an organization in the united states called the national transport safety board the ntsb and they've been monitoring car fires since the 1990s they've got data going back decades, long before there were any EVs. And what they do is they look at the number of car fires per 100,000 cars on the road. Now, of course, there are a hell of a lot more petrol and diesel cars on the roads of the United States, as there are here in Europe, um, than there are EVs. But there are enough EVs now for that data to be uh, statistically significant. Um, I think there are about 2 million EVs on the roads of the USA, something like that now. And I think another million will be sold this year. So anyway, their, their data, I'm just going to, you know, do a snapshot here. And it, and it shows that, you know, uh, as you can see, the, the worst kind of car to be in statistically uh, is a hybrid car, then it's a gasoline car, and then sort of like 50 times less likely to happen is an EV fire. Um, but in fact, there's lots of data around from insurance companies who collect that kind of data. And another one is the, just looking at it up here, the Swedish Civil Contingencies Agency, which in Swedish is known as the MSB. I don't know why, but I don't speak Swedish. And they collect lots of data on car fires as well. And um, I looked at a report that they put out. Again, you can find it on the internet. Uh, and it shows that, uh, you know, you're like 25, 30, 40 times less likely to be involved in a car fire in an EV than you are in a fossil fuel car. But the interesting thing that they uh, pointed out is that um, they did. They do the survey every year, and uh, in I think eighteen months or two years, the number of EVs on the roads of Sweden uh, have, has doubled. And obviously, Sweden is second only to Norway. I think where, in terms of uh, new car sales being uh, EVs, um, so the EV market penetration there is very high. So the number of EVs has doubled. But they say, the MSB say, that the number of EV car fires has stayed the same. Now that's interesting because in the early days of EVs, there were some well-reported car fires. Of course, the, the, you know, the, you know, the mainstream media is all over anything to do with EVs, uh, certainly anything bad to do with EVs. And uh, I think in the United States where the Chevy Bolt was selling quite well in its early days. Um, there were quite a few EV fires. I say quite a few relative to the number of cars that were sold. It was still very small. And these fires were traced back to a manufacturing fault at the factory of LG Chem, who supplied the batteries. And in fact, I believe there were one or two uh, fires with Hyundai Konas as well, which use also batteries from LG Chem. But since then, the, the, the fires have been extremely few and far between. And, you know, really, statistically, you are far less likely to have a car fire in an EV than a gasoline car or a diesel car. But of course, um, you know, the, the, the press is all over every single EV fire where there are hundreds. I think there are 300 petrol or diesel car fires a day in the UK. And do they ever get on the news? No, of course they don't. But of course, you know, the 
anti-EV mob are now saying, oh, you shouldn't park next to an EV because it might suddenly burst into flames. Or, you know, if your neighbour has an EV, tell him to park it as far away from your house as possible. I mean, it's just absolute nonsense and, you know, scaremongering. Uh, but anyway, I just thought I'd get that one off my chest. Uh, I'm going to do a few more of these because these channels keep churning out their nonsense without any data or experience to back it up. Um, and uh, I'm on them. <laughs> okay, it's just me uh, with my little channel, whereas uh, thankfully there are much more viewed channels than mine, like the Fully Charged Show. Now they have um, a sort of a sub-channel, which is really challenging all the uh, misinformation, fake news and other exaggerations that there are uh, around in the press. Um, somebody said to me, in fact, that uh, in the UK, the Sun newspaper, if you can call it that, has had a hundred consecutive days of anti-EV articles. Now, who owns the Sun and the Express and a few other newspapers? Oh, it's Rupert Murdoch. Um, does he have any links with the oil industry? Well, I couldn't possibly say. But uh, there we go. Um, there's money at stake. And they can see month by month their market dwindling away. As we're now at 1.3 million new EVs being sold in the world globally. So that's, you know, it's happening, folks. And uh, every million EVs that are sold displace 20,000 barrels of oil use a day. Now we know that uh, that's a drop in the ocean because I think about 50 million barrels of oil are used globally to keep our cars, vans and trucks and whatnot running on the world's roads. But we're nibbling away at it. EV sales are a good thing. They're reducing the dependence on fossil fuels. They're reducing the amount of CO2, nitric oxide, sulfur dioxide, particulates and other nasties that are polluting our cities and causing all kinds of health problems and deaths. So there we go. Um, I'm going to do my little bit to fight the good fight. And I hope you enjoyed this little uh, rant. And uh, until the next time.